Good morning, everybody. I'm wearing a hat for some reason, and today I'm bringing you the build guides for Hardcore Season 6. Now, Hardcore Season 6 is just a week away, and I have six builds today just for you to make sure you make it through Hardcore every single time, depending on exactly what you want to play. Now, important note, all the builds I'm showing you today are free. Absolutely free. Zero dollars for all of these builds. You can get out and play them right away if you like. I want to make sure that people that are getting started soon, maybe they've never played the game before and they just want to try it out or they're looking for something. This should be very helpful for many of you. But don't worry. Just because they're free to play does not mean they're bad. In fact, I'm going to be releasing tomorrow another video, which is going to be featuring pay-to-play builds, which are just builds that have features that you have to pay for or unlock as you play the game. But they're not better. Um, in fact, some of them are kind of worse, but they're very interesting, so it should be fun. But either way, if that excites you, um, you got six builds here for you today. We're going to be going over them. And of course, as always, if you're not sure what you're looking for, just kind of skim around. There's going to be time codes and stuff, so you should e easily be able to find what you need. So, Hardcore League, you need survivability, you need damage, you need a way to help out your team. And that's why all of these builds here are designed specifically for those functions. And starting off, we're going to work with Barbarian Druid. Now, Druid is always going to be good for Hardcore League. Bears are fantastic. They have a ton of health. They do a ton of damage. Uh, that's pretty much all you need. Sure, they don't deal with traps too well, but it turns out that if you just have so much health and you reduce damage by a huge amount, you don't really care about that. However, we're going to be mixing in a little bit of Barbarian as well to Barbarian here with the sole purpose of getting a couple extra special abilities from Barbarian to make you even tankier. So this is a half-orc character. The first time I think I've actually ever used a half-orc for a uh, um, hardcore build guide with tons of strength and we're going to be maxing out the strength. As far as the level up process goes, you start out with some druid right away. This gives you the bear form really quickly, and on top of that, gets you access to the natural fighting feat line. Natural fighting allows you to strike through while you're in bear form, which basically means whenever you attack, you hit two targets instead of one. And as you get more of these feats, then all of a sudden you start hitting three targets. So your attacks just kind of cleave through all the monsters in front of you. So that's very important. So once you pick up some of those abilities, then you get a couple uh, specific uh, bear-focused or druid-focused things like Quicken Spell, which allows you to cast spells even faster, and you get improved critical with slashing weapons because this character is generally going to use them. Now this means you don't have to be picky about the weapons you use at all. You can use falchions, great swords, great axes, all of them work. The only thing you need to know is that this character is designed to use two-handed weapons and not a sword and shield. Um, if you want to use a sword and shield, Hardcore Season 5, I posted a build guide for a gnome bear druid um, that uses shields. This one is a two-handed fighter, and it just smashes people. But you can't. the only two-handed weapon you get proficiency with until you take a level of Barbarian is Quarterstaff. So you basically just run around with a Quarterstaff, smashing stuff until you hit level 4, and then you can use any weapon you want in the entire game. And that's basically the gist of it. The epic feats are all correlated along being tanky and giving yourself some extra damage. Now, as far as the enhancement tree and how you spend your enhancement points during the level up process, Nature's Protector is kind of the key here. It gives you the Nature's Protector stance, which is very, very defensive. And it also gives you a whole bunch of um, different types of abilities like this rage ability, where when you rage, your character gets even stronger and is able to just like cast your druid spells even while raging. So you take less damage, you do more damage, you heal more, and you can still cast your spells even though you're raging. On top of that, you also want to make sure out of the Barbarian Tree, we're going into Frenzy Berserker. Once you get the opportunity to unlock Frenzy Berserker by taking some levels of Barbarian, this ability, Blood Tribute, is kind of the most important thing. Um, basically what it does is whenever you press this button, you gain temporary health for one minute. Um, and temporary hit points are kind of like a shield, so you gain like some protective effect on top of your character. 150 temporary hit points is absolutely huge. Consider that at the beginning of the game, monsters hit you for 5 to 10 damage. So if you have this maxed out, that's like saying, okay, I'm mitigating about, you know, 30, 20 to 30 hits from monsters just by pressing this button. Now, the penalty is that it costs you one point of constitution, but you start with 16 and your character is a bear, which gives you more constitution, um, and you're going to be getting more constitution as you level up. So you don't have to worry about this at all. You can just press press blood tribute and it basically makes you immune during the entire leveling process 
pretty much everything else in here, like extra constitution while raging, um, or, you know, the entire wolf tree. This stuff from the wolf just gives you additional damage as well as some extra defense from abilities like flight, which gives you dodge and some double strike, as well as things like being immune to knockdown because you're in animal form. Overall, this character is extremely defensive um, and offensive at the same time. And I am just noticing I did make an error in this build. I forgot this ability here, which is hilarious. So I'm gonna actually make sure that's posted in there when I'm when I'm done. Um, but Savage Roar. This is one of the kind of the key things about Bear Druid, and this is one of the things you want to make sure you get as soon as possible. What this does is uh, you have this ability, Bloody Claws. So whenever you cast the Maul spell, and we'll talk about spells in a minute, but Druids get special animal form spells. And the Maul spell is a attack that only works well in bear form. And it does some damage, it's not a big deal. But what matters is you get this stack of Killer Instinct. So every time you use it, you get a stack of Killer Instinct. This claw appears on your screen. And when you have three of them, it's plus three damage per hit, which is not bad. But you can cash out those stacks by casting the Roar spell, where your Druid will roar and it stuns all nearby targets. Um, this is kind of the bread and butter of Druid, um, where basically you just kind of press a single key and then your character just roars and everything in the room is stunned. And you can probably understand that stunning everything around you is really, really useful, especially on a difficulty where if you die once it's game over. So incredibly useful, very easy to do. You just run around pressing mall all the time and then stun people. So overall, Pretty straightforward enhancement tree. The general path you want to follow is to work your way up Nature's Protector to get the Savage Roar stuff. Avoid the Raging for the first little bit um, because you can't cast spells while Raging. You do want to be able to heal yourself, but work your way up Nature's Protector to get yourself access to Savage Roar as well as the Enchanted Defense stuff here for Nature's Defense as a huge defensive boost. Then once you have Barbarian, work your way up Frenzied Berserker to get access to the um, Blood Tribute effect here. And then once you have access to Blood Tribute, then maybe grab some Ravager and the Hardy Rages for the extra constitution. Get the extra Rages you from uh, here. So you want to grab the extra Rages and the Power Rage to get up to um, Blood Tribute. So you have all these extra Rages. Then start taking the Rage effects. The reason why you want to delay it is in the other levels. You only get two of these and they don't last very long. So if you put your points in here, let's just say you want to heal yourself, you can't cast spells while raging, so you have to turn off your rage, then you have to heal yourself, then you have to re-rage, well now you're out of rages, so if you heal yourself again, you're completely out. But once you take the Barbarian, you take the extra rages, you get the extra constitution while raging, not only does rage make you more defensive, because rage will now give you seven points of constitution, which is a ton of extra health, and more uses of blood tribute, but also, um, you'll have like eight of them, so... But even if you don't have the ability to cast spells while raging, if you need to cast spells, you can just turn off your rage, cast your heals, and then turn your rage back on, and you're not going to run out. So keep that in mind. The Nature's Warrior tree is mostly damage, um, so I would recommend probably putting points into here later than the other trees. As far as the epic destinies go, um, this character is super straightforward. You just go Fury of the Wild. You take pretty much everything in here that's going to add you some extra defense and a little bit of damage, and your character becomes super duper tanky. On the side, uh, on the side of that, you also grab uh, Legendary Dreadnought for some extra health as well as some extra defense, and you also go Primal Avatar to get access to this ability, Reborn in the Fire and Spring to Summer. Now you're not going to be using Spring to Summer, just Reborn in the Fire, but basically it's a button that you can press in Epics that heals you and your allies for a huge amount, and you can press this all the time. So that's kind of the whole the whole deal. It basically gives you a free AoE heal. So if you are going to be going all the way up to level 30 or 32 now, um, that will be a massive benefit to your total party because you can cast all this stuff while raging because it counts as druid spells. Um, so hopefully that hasn't been too overwhelming as far as like what type of items you should need. You're a strength based character. So you need like strength items, you need constitution items and that sort of thing. Um, you're also looking for anything that gives you uh, health or uh, armor class, physical or magical resistance rating, um, saving throws, things that will keep you defensive. Uh, you don't really have to worry about skill points or anything. Uh, wisdom is okay. You do need to get some wisdom to be able to cast the higher level of druid spells. But that's about it. And then as far as speaking of druid spells, as far as they go, um, I have the listing here to try to kind of go through some of it. A lot of these are defensive buffs. Most of the attacks that you actually need, you get very early. So Maul, which then turns into Great Maul, higher level as Druid. Um, Roar, as I said, which you get at level 3. And then, of course, Shred here, which goes with Maul. These are just attacks that do a bunch of damage. You want to have these. Everything else in this list is something like Magic Fang, a buff that increases your damage. Ramsmite, a buff that increases your damage. So both very good. 
Cure wounds, that heals you. Cure serious wounds, that heals you more. Cure critical wounds, it heals you even more. So a lot of healing spells, and the rest of them are just good defensive spells. Freedom of movement, so you can't be locked up by webs or magical holds or things like that. Um, Death ward, which means that monsters can't instant kill you. Very, very good for Hardcore League, as it turns out. Um, and then more stuff as you get higher level. The only real important thing you need to note is that once you get access to level 9 spells, Regenerate Mass is one of the best heals in the whole game, um, and you'll want to just use this one all the time. Don't use Regenerate uh, once you have Regenerate Mass, because for 10 more spell points, it just heals everyone around you and, and you for only 10 more points. And re for some reason, Regenerate Mass casts faster, so it's even better. Um, so that's kind of a interesting little quirk there. Anyways, that is Barbarian druid and it should be very very powerful for hardcore league this character does a lot of damage with the two-handed weapon and will be able to slam your way through your enemy's defenses very quickly now maybe barbarian isn't your chosen path and you'd like to play a wizard and specifically maybe even a wizard that deals with traps now this league i didn't put specifically a rogue i think rogues especially pure rogues are really hard to play on hardcore league they are squishy uh you need too many stats because you want to like dual wield and also have intelligence and if you're playing free to play you can't get intelligence to damage and but if you're playing as a ranged character maybe it works but then you need to multi-class it's like a whole thing so this uh, Seasons Rogue is a Pale Master, so it's going to be a, uh, a rogue that is also a wizard. Now, this is my character, so this is what I'm going to be running. I'll be playing a free-to-play character alongside many of you, so if you want to see the character that I'm going to be running on the first day of Hardcore, uh, in which me and some of my friends are going to be going from 1 to 20 on the first day, um, pushing it as fast as we can, then this is what I'm going to be doing, so it should work. It's a dwarf because dwarves get extra health and constitution, and we go with 18 constitution and 18 intelligence with 10 strengths just to help with alleviating carrying gear. Um, if you get overloaded, you have a reduced, uh, or your carrying capacity, you have reduced armor class and you move slower. Moving slower is bad because monsters will catch up to you, and reducing your armor class is also bad because um, remember, you won't have guild buffs on the first day. Now, as far as the actual leveling process goes, I'm starting with a level of wizard um, here because it gives you access to Sonic Blast. On top of that, it also gives you access to a robe um, that gives you plus one caster level on all of your first level spells. So it might seem weird not to start with rogue at level one, but by starting with wizard, I get access to Sonic Blast and the, um, like I said, that robe, and that robe is very, very good because uh, it means that even though I'm down one level of wizard, I still count basically as second level wizard, third level wizard, fourth level wizard when I have that level because I have the robe that gives me the plus one. So it might seem very strange. So we take the rogue level at two. We take the second rogue level at nine because I'm playing as a pale master. Uh, pale master wizards get the ability to heal themselves really well around level seven. The idea is you turn into an undead and then you cast magic to be able to heal uh, yourself with negative energy. Wizards can't cast positive energy, they don't, they're don't. they not healers, um, but they are necromancers, and so you can heal yourself with negative necromancy. Um, but you can only do that really effectively once you're at 7 wizard, so you want to get that as soon as possible. Then, once you're at level 9, you take that second rogue level, which lets you catch up on some skill points, and then also grants you evasion, and then the rest is wizard. As far as the actual spells go, or feats. We're taking quick and maximize. You do get some spell-like abilities you're going to use on this character, as well as the necromancy focus abilities. Uh, this character is only going to be using necromancy focus during the level up process. Now, granted, there are a lot of abilities that, or a lot of spells that use uh, evocation and other things, and maybe you're worried about your spells not landing. But in that regard, you kind of just use volume during the leveling process. The the key to your spells not landing is kind of just using volume and casting more of them. Your character also gets mental toughness and improved mental toughness and lots of actual toughness, so you have more health. Health is very important to this character build. As we move further into epics, you're going to be taking things that keep you alive, so epic spell focus necromancy for more necromancy DCs to combine with the enchantment focus, which gives you all the enchantment bonuses as well, so you can be kind of like a necromancer enchanter, holding your allies in place and blowing them up with necromantic magic. And on top of that, you pick up some extra tanky stuff. Things that give you more resistance to damage. So it makes your character really, really strong. You also grab Extend Spell here a little bit earlier. You don't want to cast Extend Spell on all of your abilities. Basically just the Death Aura spell. And maybe if you have access to Displacement or other good defensive effects that last a very short amount of time. This just saves you more spell points because those spells cost a lot. And they you can get an additional 10 points to double the duration. Which uh, is going to save you spell points in the long run. Now, I do just want to mention the skills. I'm not really going to talk about it too much for a lot of these builds, but this one, uh, basically, search is important, open lock is important, disable device is important. These are your rogue skills. There's no spot in this build. Um, the main reason for this 
is that it's very difficult to fit a spot in because of how many skill points you actually get as a wizard leveling up. If you want to have spot instead of one of these other things, drop open lock so you won't be able to pick locks, you won't be able to open doors, but you can carry the knock spell to try to get some of them, and you can have spot maxed out to maybe detect some of the traps. The problem is with a wisdom starting of eight, you probably won't be able to spot most of the traps anyway, which is one of the reasons why I don't have it here. Uh, so you will be blindly walking into traps. You may want to look up quest guides as you're going through, especially on Hardcore League, if you don't know where the traps are. Now let's move on to the Enhancement Tree. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this character is using the Pale Master Tree for the most part. You're going to be picking up Shroud of the Lich because it reduces the damage you take from magic and makes you tankier and gives you more intelligence. It's just a good thing. It also makes you heal more. You're going to pick up all the self-healing abilities. You're going to be picking up all the negative energy critical effects. You grab the Skeleton Knight because a lot of the pets that you can summon in Dungeons & Dragons Online are not very good. And Skeleton Knight is very good. It says Skeleton Knight is a very strong fighter, and that is absolutely correct. Put three points into this right away. That's the first thing you should do. You're level one wizard. Don't want to put your points in. One point in Pale Master and three points in the Skeleton Knight. Summon this bad boy and just let it solo quests for you. Maybe grab a hireling, like one of the level one or two barbarian hirelings. Summon the two of those guys and they will clear every quest for you on Elite while you walk around picking up items out of chests and that sort of thing and just keeping yourself alive. Now, when it comes to actually becoming a Pale Master, remember when I said that Pale Masters heal around level seven um, or like seven wizard, which means for this character level eight, that's when you want to enter the Shroud of the Lich form. So I wouldn't recommend actually taking this right away. Ideally, start by putting one point here into Dwarven Toughness because it gives you 10 hit points. Make sure you put the first point into Eldritch Knight to get 10 extra hit points because it's 10 hit points and 10 hit points right away. And additionally, once you take your first level of Rogue at level two, put the point in a mechanic and grab the mechanics and the awareness here. This is some open lock disable device and search and spot. This will help you actually detect and find and disable your traps because remember, you don't have any items, you don't have any ship buffs, uh, so it's gonna be hard to actually keep up with those stats. So just grabbing a couple of things there. Then you can take the Shroud of Lich here, but before you actually do this, um, you know, grab Necrotic Touch spell like abilities so you can damage monsters. Grab some of this negative energy conduit stuff to make sure so you heal more. Maybe even pick up negative energy adept and necrotic bolt. So by the time you hit level eight, then you're gonna put the point into or you're gonna actually turn on Shroud of the Lich. But very importantly, you also get this ability that says you no longer take extra damage from light, undead shock. Make sure you take this one at the same time. Um, because undead take double damage from light. So, so that means if an enemy cleric casts Searing Light, which is a very common spell in the level um, like six to 12 range from enemy spellcasters, you will die. So you have to make sure you take this one as well. Outside of that, just level up the rest of the points. Um, Eldritch Knight is specifically for just getting access to um, more health. All these things give you more health as well as Subtle Force giving you deflect arrows. So when arrows and other projectiles come in, they just get knocked away. More health. More defense, more defense, more defense, extra intelligence, defense. Um, and then, of course, the top tier here, Necrotic Blast is your bread and butter. Once you get this one, it basically kills every single thing in one hit. You just slap all your meta magic feats onto it, and you're good. Uh, more Necromancy DCs are good. And then, of course, the Ascendant Shroud, which gives you Ultra Lich form. The last thing is a Dwarf Tree. Whenever you have free points, just feel free to throw them in here. Constitution, health, constitution, health is very good. And this is 5% extra health, so your character becomes very, very tanky in comparison to your friends, which is one of the reasons why we picked Dwarf. Moving on to the epic stuff, um, this might be a little bit far for some people, but basically Magus the Eclipse is my option for this tree. The main reason why you want to use Magus of the Eclipse is because um, Frostlight is actually quite strong. The amount of damage it does is very good, as well as getting access to Null Magic Strike, which means that every time you affect a monster with any spells or effects, uh, it has a chance of stripping their ability to cast spells for 30 seconds. If you're planning on doing endgame, that means you're going into Reaper mode. And if you're going into Reaper mode, uh, turning off Reaper's spellcasting ability and Dangerous Monster spellcasting is really, really, really good. Especially because you can just stand back, throw out like an AoE spell, and then strip the magic casting from two or three different monsters in a pack. It's very, very useful. On top of that, you also get a lot of defenses because this makes you take less damage from cold. So your character takes less damage from cold and lightning and light damage, all of which is very good. Plus you can cast the Fire Shield spell on top of that for less fire damage. So you're basically almost like immune to elemental damage. And then on top of that, you get all the access to amazing abilities like Time Stop, where if something is going bad, you just press a button and nothing can move. So it's very cool. Um, you also grab uh, Renewal out of Unyielding Sentinel. And the reason you might, th uh, you might be confused as to why you would grab this, it's basically for helping other people. There's no consequence here. You're putting points in Unyielding Sentinel for health, and uh, this just allows you to heal your friends. And 
It's very nice when somebody is in a bad situation, you just go boom and pop them up and make sure they don't die. So it's a very, very nice part about this. Pretty much every character I'm going to recommend, if they can cast spells, I'm going to recommend Renewal because this is one of the best heals in the entire video game. And uh, you want to take it in this game mode where people need to help each other. And then lastly, Scales of the Dragon here. Um, this ability grants you like a blade of armor protection so basically whenever you cast it it makes it so monsters do less damage when they hit you up to a point um this is very very good and you should be using this on cooldown especially whenever it like comes off it basically protects you from 480 damage from attacks which means that if that reaper hits you the first hit you ignore it which is very very cool so keep that in mind and then lastly let's talk about spells so people ask me the question all the time they say stream tom how do i deal with undead i'm playing a pale master what do i do and the answer is you cast all of the other spells. Wizards get hundreds of spells. Um, and you do have cool negative spells that you can cast, but for the most part, you're not really casting most of your negative spells. Sonic Blast is one of the best spells in the game, and you can literally use this from level 1 to 20. It's very, very good. Get some Sonic spell power, and you'll be very happy with yourself. Scorch deals air effect fire damage, and is incredibly powerful. Acid Blast is a big acid explosion, and it's really good. Fireball. I don't need to explain that one. It's Fireball. <laughs> Um, ball lightning. It's like fireball, but it's lightning. Code of cold. It's uh, like scorch, but it's cold, and it does more damage. As you get higher level, you do get some better necrotic spells, like necrotic ray, which is probably the one of the best single target damage spells you're going to get, given that it's very cheap, and also does like a million damage. But even still, delayed blast fireball, huge AoE damage. Polar ray, amazing single target damage. So if you encounter undead, just cast one of the other spells that you have, summon your skeleton knight, and play in a group. Worst case scenario, you also have Undeath to Death, which lets you instant kill targets that are undead later on. Most of the spells on this list are going to be defensive, so I'm talking about things like Jump, uh, Night Shield, Shield, uh, Blur, things to keep you alive and awake. Just make sure that you take uh, specifically these three spells, Death Aura, Dimension Door, and Negative Energy Burst for fourth level. Negative Energy Burst is your heal. You press this and your health goes up. Very important, so that's the button you get once you're level uh, 8. Death Aura, which heals you passively. Again, very good. You want to make sure you have that for your Pale Master stuff. And then Dimension Door is just so useful for getting out of a jam if you're going to die. Um, you know, skipping tons, tons of stuff in quests, going back to the beginning to help pe guide people who may have gotten lost. Like, so many good uses for Dimension Door. Dimension Door, it's one of the best spells in the entire video game. And as you level up, you get more utility spells. The only spell I'll say that I want to single out of the higher level ones, they kind of like explain themselves as to why they're good. Like, Hold Monster Mass. Prevent, paralyzes all targets. Amazing. Whale the Banshee kills six monsters. Really, really good. Um, Prismatic Spray. This one has a random chance to instantly kill a monster. It has a one in seven chance of instantly killing something, which is quite good. Um, this is useful for constructs. So um, constructs are the bane of wizards. So, you know, your, your golems and that sort of thing. But you hit them with Prismatic Spray, and they just instantly die sometimes. Um, so if you have a bunch of spell points left over and there's two golems standing between you and the end of a end of a dungeon, just start hitting with Prismatic Spray. Reminder, the instant kill effect does not work on bosses, so red named golems. Um, but at, against everything else, you just kind of cast Prismatic Spray and then delete them from the universe. It's very cool. So overall, uh, this character is very, very strong and very, very defensive. You're going to have a lot of hit points um, and a lot of damage on top of that. Plus, you can deal with every single trap in the entire game uh, all the way through endgame because your character is an intelligence-based build. And as I said, this is going to be my build. So um, make sure to check out the live stream if you want to see how it is going to go. All right. So next up is Paladin. Now, Paladin is very, very defensive and good for Hardcore League. They get tons of immunities, immune to disease, immunity to fear. They have a ton of health. They have really good damage. They have cool, useful spells. They can heal other people. Lay on Hands is a great instant cast ability that heals people. And they're really defensive and tanky. So I want you to play a Paladin. But this league, we're making a single weapon fighter Paladin. So generally people think Paladins as two-handed fighters, maybe the sword and shield sort of guy. This time we're going single weapon fighting for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that it means that you have a lot of good single target damage. So if a dangerous monster appears, you can chop it up. Single weapon fighting basically get, takes your one-handed weapon and gives it the damage of a two-hander. So you hit extremely hard with your one-hander while also giving you super fast attack speed so you can attack really quickly and smash something apart. The downside is you don't have area of effect like a two-hander has where they just cleave through monsters. But astute paladin players know that paladins get like 15 different area of effect attacks, so it doesn't matter. 
and the attack speed from single weapon fighting increases the attack speed of your area of effect attacks. So you can just press all your cleaves and get the super fast attack speed and the damage and you lose absolutely nothing, which is why single weapon fighter paladin is very powerful and very good and is very popular in the current end game meta. So how do we build it? First, paladins need a lot of stats, wisdom for spells, charisma for all of their defensive abilities, constitution for health and strength for damage. So. Dragonborn. They get strength and charisma already, and they lose dexterity, which you don't care about as a paladin. So you have this as your starting stat line. You will need to make sure you get like a wisdom plus two item by level 11, so you can like start using um, your higher level spells, but you'll have time to get that later. As far as the leveling process goes, um, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna make sure you pick um, Black Dragonborn Ancestry because it reduces damage from acid. There's just a lot of damage over time, acid effects and acid traps, and this will help you survive if you accidentally stumble into those things. This build is also using Onatar, which is Warhammers. Uh, Warhammers are a very, very good weapon, and they're very, very good for Hardcore League for two reasons. The first reason is nobody uses them. And since nobody is using Warhammers, it means that you'll be able to get Warhammers pretty easily. A good Warhammer drops in a chest. Oh, hey, can I have that? And then people will just give it to you because they don't want to use them. Um, the reason why Warhammers aren't used in the traditional endgame is because they just don't have good, like, items that are made by the development staff. So the all the raid weapons, the good ones are the longswords and the kopeshes and other things like that. There aren't really a lot of good Warhammers at the endgame. But you're not raiding on Hardcore League, you're leveling. And the leveling Warhammers are all very good. And even at the end game, the non-raid Warhammers are really, really good. So Warhammer is a fantastic choice for Hardcore League. Uh, not only because of that, but also there's a ton of monsters that have resistances to every damage that's beaten by bludgeoning, uh, different types of champions, different types of undead, so bludgeoning damage is super valuable for this type of character. So you're going to grab all the single weapon fighting feats, um, you're also going to make sure you be a member of Onatar, grab some toughness for some health, improve critical bludgeoning, and uh, yeah, moving up the tree with some more toughness. In theory, if you want to cast some spells slightly faster, especially for some cure spells, instead of toughness you could take the quicken spell. <coughs> Sorry, you could take the Quicken um, spell um, metamagic feat if you want. Entirely up to you. Um, I'm leaving up as toughness for people that want to stay alive a little bit better because you use more health. But like I said, you can still take Quicken if you feel like that will help you a little bit more. And then as you level up, very, very standard uh, feat list. You're going to be grabbing just all the good stuff for single weapon fighting for the damage, as well as some more toughness and some more defense. Um, you're going to grab Embodiment of Law because this is very good for the uh, Epic Destiny we're going to be using in Sign of the Ethereal Plane, because it makes it so that monsters um, can't hit you with your permanent invisibility guard and lesser displacement effect, which is very, very cool. But that's some later down the road stuff. Oh, as far as skills go, um, you don't have a lot of skill points because your intelligence is low, so you use Balance, which you need to take for uh, single weapon fighting, so don't if you're going to change something, don't change this. And use Magic Device, which will allow you, with your Charisma, because your character is going to get some Charisma items and be able to pump up your Charisma later in the game, uh, this will allow you to uh, use all sorts of different utility items, like uh, healing effects, like heal scrolls, um, you know, uh, uh, why am I not thinking about this? Protect Magical protection effects, like stone skin, shield wands. Uh, you'll be able to use effects such as greater heroism to buff up your characters. Use Magic Device, very, very useful on a Paladin. And all these other stats, they kind of don't matter. Don't worry about that. So next is the Enhancement Tree. What do your Enhancement Tree look like? Well, this character generally is going to be a Knight of the Chalice. However, you're also going to be using the Sacred Defender Tree and the Dragonborn Tree. So the reason why we use this specifically is because the uh, Knight of the Chalice Tree is a better bread and butter. It gives you a whole bunch of damage, gives you extra smites, gives you your Exalted Cleave, which is a cleave and very useful. Exalted Smite, which is a super mega smite, is one of the best damage attacks in the entire video game. and is also a frontal cleave and hits all monsters in front of you for some reason. Um, the Avenging Cleave, which is an even better cleave. So cleave, cleave, cleave. So you can just put these buttons on one, two, and three, and then just go one, two, three, and your guy's spinning in a circle like a blender, blowing up everything super fast. But why stop there? Get Holy Retribution. Not only is this a frontal cleave that also deals extra damage to monsters, but if they're evil, they just die. They just die. You just press the button and they just die. How cool is that? They just get deleted from the universe. They're they're purged because you're a paladin and you destroy evil. On top of that, you're also going to be taking Divine Might because this is the best buff in the entire game. It basically says, take your charisma and add it to your strength um, effectively. So it gives you like more damage, more attack, and increase the, the DC of some of these abilities. So when monsters try to resist your cleave or your instant kill, they can't. And healing amplification. So you get a ton of healing amplifications. You just heal for a whole lot extra. But we don't stop there. 
then you're using Sacred Defender as well. Sacred Defender is gonna give you access to the Sacred Defense Stance, which is just a combat stance that makes you tankier. And it also gives you more threat, but that makes sense. You are threatening, you're a paladin, you're very dangerous. Um, and you're probably gonna have them, if you do this build, you're gonna have the most health in your party. So it's okay to have the monsters attacking you because you don't really take a whole lot of damage and you heal for like a million. You're also gonna be grabbing the extra um, physical magical resistance rating here and other buffs onto the Sacred Defense and the extra lay on hands. Um, this is probably one of the things I would go for first. I would probably go Slayer of Evil and grab the extra smites and then grab the Holy Bastion and then the extra Lay on Hands right away. And in fact, actually, once I do that, I would also say grab Durable Defense and then pick up Sacred Defense. And then you can kind of spend more points in the Night of the Chalice Tree to pick up some of these cool things like Exalted Cleave and the other effects here. The last place you should spend points is Dragonborn. This is just the extra. Um, do this absolutely last. Um, but yeah, that's probably how I would do it. So do like four points here to grab extra smite, then Holy Bastion to grab the on hands, durable defense, and the sacred defense. And then at that point, I'd probably go grab Exalted Cleave, grab Exalted Smite, you know, Divine Might, probably just work literally entirely up Knight of the Chalice more than anything else. Um, and then, uh, or actually, that's not true. Um, that's not true. I would do this get up the Exalted Smite, then after you have Exalted Smite, move up. I did this in the wrong order. You should grab Tenacious Defense first, and then, uh, so grab Tenacious Defense right here instead. I did that wrong. I'm not gonna redo it here, though. I'll do it after the video's over. Um, so you have this extra hit points, and then kind of, um, and then kind of go back into the Night of the Chalice Tree. Now, you might be wondering why you're spending so many points in Sacred Defender. Um, Vanguard doesn't do anything for you, and you don't have anywhere else to spend your points. And Sacred Defender has a couple cool magical effects. First, you have all the different defense. So you have, like, the extra saving throws. You have the extra armor class, physical resistance rating. You have bonus strength, bonus maximum hit points. Movement speed was important. But also on top of that, physical and magical resistance rating. And then you get this glorious stand effect, which gives you even more hit points. So you have 30% bonus health all the time, which is huge. More lay on hands charges, more healing amplification, and more physical and magical resistance rating. Which means your character has these like super juiced lay on hands. You have like a million of them. And you heal for so much, your character heals for double, just all the time. Someone heals you for 10, no, you heal for 20. So very, very useful. Everything else in Night of the Chalice is pretty straightforward. It gives you a lot of damage, and Paladins are one of the highest damage classes for a reason. They're very, very, very good right now. Now, one of the reasons why we do so much in the uh, defense tree there is because if you decide to go to epics and you want to go all the way up to level 32 to be like an endgame DPS monster, you're using Divine Crusader, which has a whole bunch of healing effects, which your character is also very good for. Picking up, you know, extra defense, um, these extra smiting abilities. Whenever you use your smite eel, evil, uh, your or your, your smite evil, not only does it AOE and kill everybody, it also now heals all your allies, making it just the best button on the keyboard. You get this crusade or consecration ability, which heals you and all your allies as long as you're standing in this big circle. So again, more healing and AOE that's going out. And on top of that, your consecration is also a stun. So when you consecrate, all the monsters nearby you get stunned because they cower before your incredible might. You have a bunch of extra defenses coming from your Divine Crusader stuff. And you have this Law of the Divine, which makes it so you do a ton of extra damage just for free. Now the second place where you spend your points is the Unyielding Sentinel. There's a couple reasons for this. One, it gives you a ton of tankiness and makes your character super durable. So you're gonna have thousands upon thousands of hit points once you hit the maximum level, which makes you really, really durable. But on top of that, you get Renewal, which is one of the best healing spells in the entire game for your character. And Unyielding Sentinel has a lot of melee stuff. Um, so not only do you get melee power, which increases your damage when you attack monsters, but also you get stuff like Into the Fray. When you walk into combat and start meleeing monsters, you get a massive defense and damage buff for a short duration. That's pretty good. Now, not this. while this is the tank tree, a lot of tanks don't use this. You will use this because you're not a tank. You're just killing people and you're tanky. On top of that, you also get this ability, Last Hope. Amazing for Hardcore League. When you drop below 20%, you gain a massive amount of physical and magical resistance rating and melee power for killing people, and the game starts healing you back up to full. And because you have so much healing amplification, um, this healing effect is absolutely huge, and so you literally hit full health once you hit 20%. Now, of course, this only goes off once every five minutes, but hopefully you're not putting yourself in life or death situations every five minutes. You should probably, like, you know, uh, pay more attention if that's happening. Uh, but also, you grab this Hands of the Sentinel effect, which allows you to use um, your character level instead of your Paladin level for the power of your Lay on Hands, which is very, very useful. And you get extra Lay on Hands. So your character has 10 Lay on Hands that will heal you two full, or anyone else two full, and they come back to you um, every two minutes. So uh, very, very powerful, very, very useful. Um, very much looking forward to seeing people run this through. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about here is, of course, the Paladin spells. 
and there's not a lot to say. Um, you know, you can grab the Paladin Cure spells along the way, but I would more recommend just grabbing like Wands of Cure Serious. Paladins can use Wands of Cure Serious or Potions starting at level 5. Um, even though they don't get the spell till level 14, uh, you can literally use the Wands at level 5, which is very, very useful for the leveling process. And Paladins get too many good defensive abilities. Bless is one of the best bonuses to your hit chance in the entire game, so you cast this one. Uh, Angel Skin is a massive bonus to your defense that is Paladin exclusive. Righteous Command is a massive bonus to damage that's Paladin exclusive. Uh, Prayer is a buff that uh, grants you and your allies a huge bonus to attack damage and saving throws and skill checks. Absolutely fantastic ability. Death Ward prevents you from dying. Holy Sword gives you um, a million damage. Zeal gives you a bunch of double strike, which is more damage. And Stalwart Pact makes it so when you hit half, you gain a bunch of, you basically gain a damage shield. Uh, Paladins are incredibly useful and their spells are very, very good. Just they get their heals a little bit late and you won't have a lot of mana. So go with like wands, potions, that sort of thing to make sure you have the, the healing there. And also you have all the extra Lay on Hands. So just make sure you're using your Lay on Hands appropriately. Uh, and if you're playing by yourself, bring a hireling around. If you're playing in a group, um, you know, just try to heal yourself and your friends as you go through the process. In general, in terms of itemization that you're going to be using, you're going to be looking for items that grant you strength, charisma, constitution, wisdom, pretty much any of these core stats we were talking about. Then like health, damage, um, physical and magical resistance rating. That's kind of it. Paladin doesn't really need that many specific items. Maybe movement speed. If you can grab a movement speed item, that'd be kind of nice. So you can run around a little bit faster. But Paladin's really good. It doesn't really need a lot of items. And then just pick up some Warhammers. Uh, you do need to use Warhammers. That is very important um, because the Paladin gets a bunch of bonuses while they're using their favorite weapon. So you will need to find Warhammers. So make sure you are trading with other players. I also want to point out that not all of them, but some of the builds that I'm posting here actually have some items um, put into them um, as like what you could imagine your character is going to feel like and look like. Um, so if you are at all curious, not every build will have one, but some of them will. If you decide to go there, it gives you just some recommendations. Hardcore League is use what you get more than it is use the best items. So kind of figure it out from there. Now, the last three characters have been super active characters, characters that like do stuff and you have to do stuff. Um, but sometimes you don't want to do stuff. Sometimes you just want to, like, be the tankiest and make it through all the content and never worry about it. And that's what Aura Warlock is for. Warlocks can be very active with all this Eldritch Blast where they shoot out energy beams. And that is a part of this character. But as you get higher level, eventually you get, instead of the active Eldritch Blast stuff, you basically get a Aura. And the Aura will passively damage monsters that are nearby you. Which means that you kind of don't have to do a whole lot. On top of that, the aura will give you temporary hit points. It'll basically heal you. It'll give you all sorts of cool stats. And so it's very, very important for your character to have all of these powerful effects, um, you know, built in the like extra defense, healing and protecting your allies. Man, Warlock is just kind of the greatest. It's what I use for Hardcore 3 to make it through everything. And so here you have Half Elf Aura Warlock. Constitution for not dying, Charisma, because you need it for your Warlock abilities, and a little bit of strength so you don't get overburdened. Now for the leveling process, uh, this character is going to be picking up all the spell-like abilities you need for damage, so maximize spell, empower spell, quicken spell, because Warlock has a bunch of spell-like abilities built in that you will take because they're just insanely useful, and they don't have any cost. Uh, so since they don't have any cost, you can just cast them and get all this extra power, so your items don't even matter. You don't have to worry about picking up spell power items during the leveling process because you just press the buttons that get uh, 150 and 75. Well, when you pick up an item at the beginning of the game, it gives you like 40 points. Well, that's 150. That's way better than 40. And this is 75. That's way better than 40. So keep that in mind. Um, this character also uses the Great Old One Pact for two reasons. The first is that it's based on a will saving throw. Your character will not have the charisma so that monsters fail their saves all the time. During the leveling process, it'll work most of the time. But if you want to go endgame, it's not going to work. You won't have the DCs. But it doesn't matter because it's a will save. So monsters will just always take half damage, which is good enough because you can just stack up the damage so half still feels pretty good. On top of that, you also get Knock which lets you open doors throughout the entire process. And uh, you know what? Opening a treasure chest uh, that is previously locked or, or finding a way through a locked door to a treasure chest is very helpful on hardcore because you can use every piece of gear that you can get your hands on. On top of that, you take Force Personality to get your will saves based off of your charisma instead of your wisdom, which is obviously good when you're a charisma-based character. And you grab a lot of toughness along the way to make sure you don't die. So toughness, toughness, toughness. Into Epics, you grab the Epic Eldritch Blast and Pact Dice Feet, which gives you more damage on your passive stuff that, remember, you're not actively, like, you're just, your aura is pulsing out doing all this damage, so you get more damage on that. And because your character is maxing out Constitution, you have the Constitution for Epic Toughness and Legendary Toughness, so this character has a lot of hit points. 
Then you grab Intensify for more damage on all your spell-like abilities, damage reduction effects, and some more hit points from Scion of Celestia. So your character is very, very, very tanky. Um, as far as the enhancement tree goes, uh, this is a very specific enhancement tree. You don't put any points in the half health. The reason why I took half health is because it gets you the Paladin Dilettante, which allows you to get more saving throws based on your charisma, which is quite good. The problem is it's not worth spending any more points into, so it just gives you a few bonus to saves, which is valuable for Hardcore League. You're mostly using Enlightened Spirit, Tainted Scholar, and Soul Eater. So, how do you play this character? I want to make sure this is super clear. Um, Enlightened Spirit, very, very good. You want to work into this a little bit later. You don't want to use this right away at level 1. You're going to be using the Tainted Scholar first. That's the first thing you want to do. Go into Tainted Scholar, grab the Tainted Spellcasting, grab the Strong Pact to give you more Eldritch Pact damage, grab the Strong Pact, and the uh, Chain ability. I know I didn't put Chain in here before, but basically, for the, until you have like some points, you want to get your first 12 points, grab all these strong, these first three Strong Pacts, grab Chain, and just kind of blast up with Chain because you need to get some levels and a chain is really good and getting the extra strong pact here is very, very good. So you wanna make sure you have that. Additionally, probably pretty soon, maybe at like level one, if you want, um, grab consume. By level three, you wanna make sure you have consume um, because this gives you a ranged attack that deals a whole bunch of damage um, and you can maximize and empower this. So you basically press this and whatever it touches dies, um, which is convenient. So dangerous kobold shaman, it dies. Uh, there's a, a evil kobold or hobgoblin cleric over there, it dies. Are you silly enough to play Reaper mode in Heroics? Guess what, that Reaper, it dies. Um, consume is very, very good in the Heroic leveling process, so you'll want to grab this one pretty soon to use your spell-like abilities on. But once you get to around like level 6 or 7, this is when you can start putting points in the Light and Spirit tree. You're still going to be blasting for the most part, um, but you can grab the Eldritch Burst, which is like an AoE attack, so you just press the button and it does your Eldritch Blast damage to all the nearby enemies around you. Um, and as you continue to level up, by around like level, uh, I'm going to say 8 or 9, you're still spending points largely in Tainted Scholar, getting all the damage out of here, but it's level 12 where you want to kind of re rejig a few things. Most importantly, you want to be going pretty much all into Enlightened Spirit, filling out basically as many points as you can in here, because the Enlightened Spirit tree is absolutely insane, because it gives you the Aura, which is a passive aura that damages enemies that are nearby you, and all of these buffs. Extra hit points and physical resistance rating, um, you know, or hit points, armor class, physical resistance rating, magical resistance rating. It grants you extra damage on everything you do. It gives you free temporary hit points. So the Eldritch Aura, very, very good. Um, you can swap into it sooner. If you want, you can swap into it as soon as level six um, and just grab some of the extra damage on here. Um, but I usually wouldn't. I'd recommend waiting a little bit. However, one thing I don't recommend waiting on is resist energies. This ability costs 60 spell points, and it gives you resistance to all of the elements. It's so good! <laughs> it reduces the damage you take by a huge amount. So if you, let's just say you're level 6, you put points into Tainted Spellcasting, and you grab some of this other stuff here, you grab some of the Strong Pact, and you have Chain, you've got the uh, Inhuman Understanding and Consume, and then you have points up into Resist Energies, so that's 6 points, 12 points, and, or I guess 13 points, and 3 points. That is less than 24, which is how many you'd have at 6. Um, you have pretty much an unstoppable character. You're almost immune to elemental damage. You do a bunch of damage with the Eldritch Blast, and you have Consume. So the only thing you have to worry about is getting hit by monsters, which you're a ranged character, so just walk backwards and blast them. And then, as I said, move into the Enlightened Spirit. Um, once you have access to Eldritch Burst and Spirit Blast, the game is now going to be on super easy mode. Um, you will just walk through quests, go to a monster, Eldritch Burst, Spirit Blast, with all your meta magic uh, put on them to deal a million damage, and everything will die, and then move on to the next room. And that will stay all the way through the entire leveling process. So once you hit 12, as I said, you just want to take everything Enlightened Spirit, make sure you have the Tainted Spellcasting and Utter Dark Blast, which makes your base Eldritch Blast damage evil. That might sound weird, um, but it basically just means it scales off of Light Spell Power, and you have Light Spell Power. Light spell power. This is light spell power. This is light. This is light spell power. And oddly enough, this is light spell power. Um, so Utter Dark Blast, very, very useful. And then Soul Leader Tree just gives you a bunch of defensive buffs and other things, like Feeding Frenzy, which gives you movement so you can use Consume and that sort of thing. So overall, like I said, um, Inline Spirit, super duper good, but it's really only very, very good once you hit 12. But then once you hit 12, it's like when you're cutting with your scissors, and then all of a sudden the scissors just start to glide. Very, very easy. Barely need to pay attention, and you'll get yourself. Once you hit 12, you're going to hit the level cap, you're going to hit level 32, and if you put the time in, you'll get the Reaper points if you just start doing the Reaper mode. And the reason why I say that is because, how do you set up the Epic Destinies? Unyielding Sentinel. Unyielding Sentinel is the tank Epic Destiny. And you might think to yourself that you need damage, 
but you have tons of damage, actually. Um, if you are a watcher of my content, I made a video called the um, Poison Paladin Fun Tank, uh, which uses Primal Avatar here and uses Carrion Swarm and Shard Storm to get a ton of temporary hit points and also do an insanely high amount of damage because they have no saving throws. Turns out you do that well here too, because not only are you playing as a Warlock that actually gets spell power, but you're playing as an Acid Warlock that actually gets really good Acid damage. And this and this are Acid spells. So in the epic leveling process, you have Carrion Swarm, Shard Storm, and then Elders Burst and Spirit Blast. And that's all you do. And it's going to kill every monster you come across. So why would you care about damage? You don't. Unyielding Sentinel, grab all the good stuff. The Divine Energy Resistance for your friends. Grab the Renewal for the extra healing for you and your friends. Grab Mantle of the Sentinel to give you a bunch of defense. Um, you'll probably end up wearing a shield at some point. Um, so take the physical resistance rating on shields. Um, if you're not wearing a shield, then instead of putting points into here, you can take like extra aggro if you want to tank for people. You could take the immunity to blindness if you want. But if you are wearing a shield, you can do this. A reminder that to wear a shield, you need to have arcane spell failure on your shield. So like the crystalline ward from Sharn is a great option for this character because it has no arcane spell failure. Um, so stuff like that. And then you pick up all the defensive stuff and all the extra health, and your character is just so insanely tanky. Um, for perspective as to how tanky, I don't think... Did I put items in this character? I put a few items into this character just to give you this perspective. But you have 2,700 hit points um, and, like, almost 200 physical and 130 magical. It takes you a long time to die in Reaper 4. Um, so very, very, very useful. And Reaper 4 is what people are farming at Endgame to get their Reaper points if you actually want to do that. And then Exalted Angel, just because... It gets you angelic charge, so you can move around real good, um, which is just super useful. Getting out of bad situations, staying in good situations, and you don't fail will saves on a one. Very powerful. Now, as far as the warlock spells go, uh, warlocks do not get a lot of spells, so here's how you want to do this. One, if you're worried about having shield proficiency, don't. Master's Touch gives you proficiency, so you can just cast this, and then you have proficiencies with whatever shield you have, so you don't actually have to take a feat or do anything weird. Jump is the, the best defensive buff in the game. Um... Once you get the Oro Warlock abilities, so you get to level 12, what you do is you cast the jump spell, and then you jump over top of a pack of monsters, and then you use your Eldritch Burst and your Spirit Blast. It hits all of them because they're under you, and the monsters can't hit you because you're over them. It's the perfect combination. On top of that, Blur, defensive uh, buff that's very good, and Dispel Magic. Um, Dimension Door is one of the best spells in the entire game because it allows you to get out of a sticky situation and also do many skips in many different places. You want to make sure you pick up this one. And Dark Disc Corporation is just a good damage reduction ability. In case you, know, you are uh, running away or you start dying, you can just press this one and then monsters do less damage to you. You've also got Evard's Black Tentacles, which is arguably the best spell in the entire game. Uh, this is a crowd control spell that works on everything. So um, you're, once you start using this, you will become addicted, and it will be the drain of most of your spell points. On top of that, you also grab Protection from Elements Mass, because it's a good spell for you and all your allies. And then your six level spells, both of these are not going to work. You don't have the DCs for Arcane Tempest or Whale of the Banshee, um, but the other spells aren't any better, so this is what I picked here. Uh, Whale of the Banshee is only nice just because it sometimes works, even though your DC will be zero. A monster can roll a one, so you might kill him, and it drains levels from nearby monsters, which is also quite good. Overall, Oral Warlock, insanely easy to play, super good, and I would highly recommend it for this hardcore league. Okay, so we have talked about being a bear tank, being a trapping wizard, being a super damaged DPS tank paladin, and being a super tanky, reasonably high damage warlock build. But what if you want to support people and also do really high damage? Well, that's where Spellsinger Bard comes in. Spellsinger Bard is what I use for Hardcore League Season 5 to get all of the rewards, and it is insanely useful. Uh, you pretty much can't go wrong with this type of character, or was it Season 4? I think it was season four. Yeah, I used season four for it. Sorry, I'm forgetting my own life. And Spellsinger Bard, super duper duper good. You basically need no equipment whatsoever. Um, its spells are insanely powerful. It is incredibly easy to level and it is the best support character in the game. Uh, on top of that, it was also just like, it does everything. It literally does everything except for being tanky. That is the only thing you don't do, which is also why more bards died at the level cap than any other class in the game. I don't know why. I think it's because bard players just get overconfident where they realize they do insane damage and they have amazing crowd control and they're buffing and healing everybody and they get overconfident and just throw themselves into a trap or some type of dangerous scenario. So keep that in mind. If you are playing a bard, just don't get cocky um, because I, I've seen a lot of very... Because they, they just shoot up in levels because they're so good and then, um, and then they die. So it is what it is. So you're a spell singer. You're a spell caster. Max out that charisma. Max out that constitution. Well, not really max, but do what you can and have a little bit of strength so you don't get overburdened by your items. As far as the feats go, really straightforward. Take all the spell-like ability bonus 
uh, meta magic feats here because you have a lot of spell-like abilities you get really early as a bard, which allow you to just kind of blast your way through the game. It is one of the reasons why bards are so insanely good during the leveling process. Um, force of personality for charisma to your will saves. Uh, this is important because will saves can be make or break in the early game. One hold monster, one command, and all of a sudden you're dead. So just you know, nip that in the bud. Uh, toughness for so you don't die. And then you take the spell focus evocation feats to increase the power of your evocation. Uh, around this point is where monsters are going to start really resisting you. Then you grab Inspire Excellence, which is a uh, when you use your Bardic Song on people to buff them, it gives them plus two to all ability scores, including yourself, which is obviously insanely good. Um, you take all the good Sonic buffing stuff, so Spell Power, Sonic, and Master Music to give you extra cash levels on your Sonic spells, which is what you cast. Um, you grab Embolden for some more spell DCs, so that we can actually use your crowd control abilities at endgame. Um, and then you want to grab the Spell Specialty Enchantment feat at 31, that allows you to uh, get bonuses to your enchantment spells as well, because you're evocation enchantment pretty much exclusively. And then sign of the Feywild, because you're a bard, so that's what you do. As far as the enhancement tree and how it goes, Spellsinger is the bread and butter. Um, if you uh, have never played a Spellsinger before, you might not understand the power of Sonic Blast. Sonic Blast is the first spell you take at level 1, and Sonic Blast is also the first spell-like ability you get here. You can't lose with Sonic Blast. Uh, take Spellsinger, max Sonic Blast right away, and apply Maximize to this. And then, every time you level up, this is going to be doing progressively more damage, and it's going to be really, really crazy. Keep putting points into Spellsinger, and get Shout, and max this one. With Shout and Sonic Blast maxed out, which you'll be able to do by, like, level 3 or 4, Every room, you walk in, you press shout, all the kobolds you're going to fight are dead. All the brigands you're going to fight are dead. Everybody dies. And then if they're still alive, you sonic blast them, and then that's it. And you move on to the next room. Then you grab the spell song trance, which is really good, and you want to keep rushing Spellsinger, and don't put any points anywhere else. Rush Spellsinger until you get sustaining, song, and frolic. Um, the main reason, you can also get our song of Arcane Might as well, but Sustaining Song and Frolic. Sustaining Song makes it so that when you use your Inspire ability, because Bards have two uh, songs, they have their direct single target song, which is their Inspire, where they sing it and it gives people skill points. Or they have the Aura, which is just a passive effect that gives people buffs, which is buffed by the Warchanter tree. Now the passive effect is kind of nice, but it's the Inspire that matters. Once you get to level or spell song trance, when you inspire, it reduces people's spell cost by 10% and also increases your spell DC by one, which is obviously incredibly good for you as a bard who casts spells and your allies who cast spells. So you want to use your inspire on everyone in the party at the beginning of a dungeon, but then you get sustaining song. This is a passive heal effect and is one of the best passive heals in the entire video game. It just makes it so people are constantly healing as long as they have your bard song. And bard songs last for like 10 minutes. So it might seem a little bit tedious to cast your inspire on all of your friends at the beginning of every dungeon, but this ability is so good that if you have a bard at the level cap on Hardcore League, they can just use its sustaining song on the party and then AFK at the start because they've already, they're have already they gonna heal more than anyone else. This ability is really, really, really good. Frolic, on the other hand, is similar. It's freedom of movement. This means that everybody affected by your bard song is immune to web. They're immune to hold monster. They're immune to command. They're immune to all slows in the entire game. Unbelievably good. You wanna get this stuff right away, right away, right away, right away. Now, once you have this, you're probably going to be concerned about your actual hit point total because you kind of don't want to die. So this is where you want to start putting points into the War Chanter tree. Go into the War Chanter tree, pick up the armor class and physical resistance rating to give yourself some health. Weapon training because it gives you more hit points. You want to move in, grab the action boost sprint so you can get yourself in and out of dangerous areas. Maybe arcane shield chant for the resistance because it reduces all the damage you take from elemental attacks, which is very good. Iron skin chant, which is more magic resistance rating and physical damage reduction. Insanely useful for the leveling process. Uh, Song of Heroism, which get, uh, grants saving throws to all your allies which is massive massively good and on top of that you have fighting spirit which gives you more hit points and allows your charisma score to apply as temporary hit points to your allies so 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 good um i don't recommend you go all the way up there but i would once you have like this stuff like sustaining song and uh, frolic i would go into war chanter at least to get song of heroism because this is both very very good and also it's 10 health 20 health so you get a bunch of health from that and then you're going to finish off Spellsinger. You want to go up here, grab the Advanced Musical Studies for the Mass Old Monster. You want to grab Horn of Thunder, because this is one of the best damage spells in the video game. Why it's in Bard? I don't know, but I don't make it. Super good. And Mana Regeneration, so you and your friends can never run out of mana. So you just use this effect on them, and spell points are going to be flowing through you and all your allies. Outside of just the good stuff that's in these trees, Swashbuckler gives you movement speed. Just makes you run faster for every Bard level you have, which means as a Bard, 
you get an extra 20 percent on top of ever on top of everything else so if you have a 30% movement effect, either from a 30% item, or you cast like the hay spell on yourself or something, plus this is 20%, and then this is 50%, you can double your movement speed in combat, which is very good for getting two allies to help them, and most importantly, running away when things get bad. And then you use Tiefling just to get some extra charisma, because it makes your character more powerful. As far as the epic destinies go, um, Bard is pretty straightforward. Uh, you want to go into Fatesinger and pick up all the good stuff out of Fatesinger here. Pick up the mantle, which gives you temporary hit points all the time. Uh, you want to get the harmonic resonance effects in here, which uh, whenever you hit a monster um, with pretty much anything, it gives them stacks of harmonic resonance that makes them take more damage from Sonic, which is pretty good. Um, and you're going to grab all of the um, bardic abilities down here. Most importantly, this one called Hear My Voice Friend when you get to 32, which makes it so all your shout abilities that deal damage also heal people. Um, this ability is broken. It is so good. Um, it's so good that I have a character built around this that is not a bard that I'm going to show you later. Um, and you grab pretty much all the good stuff. The only thing you'll notice is I didn't take the epic strikes. The main reason I didn't take the epic strikes here is because um, Dragon Breath is really, really good, especially blue Dragon Breath, because your character does get um, lightning uh, stuff anyway with Horn of Thunder, so you get some lightning spell power in here. Very, very powerful. Um, and with all your mana magic abilities, this is going to be better than having epic the epic strikes here, because in Hardcore League, you want to kill the monsters really quick. You don't want them to like incrementally do damage. You just want to press this button, and oh, a Reaper is running at me. Blue Dragon Breath, it's gone. Like, it's not like you do like a damage and you're casting three spells to kill it. No, no, you just want to kill it. <laughs> you don't want it, you, you don't want it to hit you once or twice. You want to get rid of that right away. And then skills of the dragon, as I've said in previous characters, this gives you a blade of armor. So it's you cast this and it gives you a 480 point shield. Uh, so whenever a monster attacks you, uh, the first 480 points of damage come out of that before your health points. And you can do this every 30 seconds. So insanely useful on top of making you take half from electric. Very good. And then the yielding sentinel because that's 35 hit points. That's 35 hit points. And this is renewal, the best heal in the game. So pretty useful. As far as spells go, Bards are really easy. Um, here's the general rule of thumb. Take Sonic Blast at level 1, always. Take every heal first. So, you know, when you get to, like, um, when you get to level 4 and you unlock second level spells, get Cure Moderate Wounds and another spell. I would recommend Cure Moderate Wounds and Sound Burst. When you get to level 7, take Cure Serious Wounds and Good Hope, because it's a very useful spell. It's, like, a really insanely good buff for you and all your friends. When you get to level 10, you unlock 4th level spells. Take Cure Critical Wounds and Shout or Dimension Door or Auto Sphere of Dancing. When you get to level 5, take Cure Light Wounds Mass and Greater Heroism. 6, take Greater uh, or Cure Water Wounds Mass and Greater Shout. So you want to take the Cure Spell and something else. You get 2 whenever you hit those levels, so that's why 4, 7, 10, 13, 16. Um, always just take the Cure one plus one of the other ones. And the other ones I would recommend first, um, as I said, Sonic Blast, insanely useful. Uh, Sunburst, insanely useful. It's an AoE damage spell that stuns. I mean, come on. Um, Good Hope, unbelievably powerful ability. Um, Shout, because it does a huge amount of damage. Greater Heroism, because it's the best, one of the best buffs in the entire game. Um, and then Greater Shout, because it's even better. It's like Shout, but it does more damage and it stuns. Wow, what an amazing effect. As far as items go, Charisma effects, Health effects, Sonic damage. Once you get past level 12, Electric damage is also nice. Um, physical resistance rating, magical resistance rating, things that boost up your saving throws. All that stuff is going to be very good, and you'll have a fantastic time with Spellsinger Bard. Now, but the last thing I want to leave you with, <clears throat> oh my god, voice is raspy, is Bard songs. Casting Bard songs can be very tough um, because people rush around and they want to do stuff. Important note, if somebody is running ahead of you when you're playing this character and they don't want to wait for your Bard songs, it's hard to leave. Let them die. Like, don't chase them through traps or anything else. Make sure you are buffing the people who are waiting for you. And if somebody runs ahead and throws himself into a dangerous situation before you can buff them, don't, like, chase them down to buff them. Like, if you catch up, then sure, buff them and do whatever. But if somebody's just sprinting away from you, um, don't, like, run after them through a gauntlet of bad enemies or things just because you want to make sure they get their buffs. It is not your responsibility if they die. It is their responsibility if they die. And that is what gets some bards killed, where they will chase after somebody um, because they, they want to make sure they get all their buffs on everyone. So don't, don't do that. If somebody runs away, let them die. That's natural selection right there, okay? And number two... Um, you want to make sure to make your bard song using faster. Um, if you start your bard song, so you cast the inspire ability, and then you tumble by holding the block key, which def is defaulted to shift, and then moving. So you hold block and press forward, your character will like roll. 
Um, and when you do such a thing, um, it animation cancels the Bard song, so you can keep doing stuff, and then the song will then eventually come up on somebody when it would naturally finish. It just makes it faster. So, for example, let's say you want to buff everyone in your party, and you want to cast the spells um, Blur and Greater Heroism, because they're both good spells. What you can do is you can click on, say you click on yourself, you cast your Bard song, you tumble, so you, your character rolls forward, and then you're free to cast Blur and Greater Heroism, and then once the Bard song's the animation would have finished, it'll then apply all the buffs to you and you can get to the next person. It just saves you a little bit of time. So pro tips for Bards, uh, take it from me, very, very good class, really good for Hardcore League. And last but not least, for sure, we have Luck Domain Caster Cleric, the standard human cleric. Um, what's been carrying people through Dungeons and Dragons adventures all the way since Dungeons and Dragons 1. Human cleric is just a staple and it makes sense. Uh, humans, versatile, get a lot of different abilities. Cleric, healers, get a lot of different abilities. Combine the two and you're in a good spot. Now, the reason why we're saying luck domain and why it's even like domain in the first place, the domains really have a huge effect on how your character is going to play as a cleric and being a caster, you have a lot of good options. You can pick one of the elemental domains to get elemental damage spells. You can pick the sun domain to get light damage spells, which I've done in the past. But this time we're picking luck domain for two reasons. Luck domain gives you a couple cool abilities that make you defensive, um, which is really important. And two, um, it's more valuable the higher level you get. So the early game might be a little bit slower than some of the other domains because you're not getting cool fire spells, for example, at low levels, but it's still very, very, very good. So as a cleric, um, you want to max your wisdom, you want some con, a little bit more strength than normal just because you're wearing like heavy armor and stuff and you have shields, so you need some more strength. And then a little bit of charisma. Your character does not have that much charisma. You will not be doing turning on this character. This is not a turning cleric. If you want a turning cleric, I've made previous Sun Domain builds for Hardcore Leagues in the past that have been very good. This is not a turning cleric. As far as the feats go, because you're a, a human, uh, <clears throat> you can take pretty much all of the metamagic abilities maximize empower quicken and empower healing and this is important because your character gets a ton of spell like abilities very 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 good spell like abilities and they don't get their cost increased when you use meta magic feats on them which is why you want to take all these meta magics as well you want to grab evocation focus because evocation is the only spell type you will be casting for damage or offense and then toughness toughness super super good really really defensive uh just increasing your health so why luck domain? Well, the first is it gives you fortitude, reflex, and will saves. It just increases your saving throws, which is cool. Also, when you turn, you gain half your cleric level as bonus saving throws, which means that you can press a turn button later on in the game and get plus 10 to your saving throws. That's really, really good, but it gets even better because you might think to yourself, well, why would I be turning? You said I'm not a turning cleric. Uh, cleric has abilities that count as turns. And so when you use those, they're like healing spells and things, um, they count as turns, so therefore they actually give you all of the luck domain effects. And so if you decide to heal yourself, you get plus 10 to all your saving throws. That's rad. That means you're basically resistant to all the magic and dangerous effects out there. Then we have um, luck domain 2. You get spell-like ability displacement. Displacement is one of the best effects in the entire game at mitigating damage because it makes it so monsters miss you half of the time. Um, you can use this all the time and basically have this up like literally all the time as a cleric. So monsters are missing you. That's 50% damage taken from physical. Unbelievably good. So that's why you want to take this one. Instead of spending uh, spell points on healing yourself, you just don't spend spell points on healing yourself and you have more mana for blowing up enemy monsters. Then you get plus two DCs of all your spells, which makes your spells harder to resist for enemies. And finally, you no longer automatically fail your saving throws on a roll of a one. Uh, I have clips on my channel of me playing and uh, just I roll a one versus disintegrate and I instantly died. You roll a one versus a trap and you instantly die even though you have evasion and high enough saving throws. Um, you know, you have you have like plus 1,000 to an ability to one of your saves, but you roll that one and you still die. Not as a luck domain. Ignore that. Runs Ones are not automatic fails, which means you won't be failing any of your saving throws going forward. And then as you move into epics, you're taking standard, spellcaster, affair, wellspring of power for damage, spell power light for spell damage, burst of glacial wrath might seem kind of weird, but basically it is a crowd control spell where you shoot at a cone of cold and it freezes all the monsters in front of you. Uh, clerics don't have any good crowd control. And this is pretty much the only one you're going to get. And it is quite, quite good. And then embolden spell, intensify spell, so more meta magic feats for your, all your spell like abilities. Um, and spell power fire and sign of Celestia for some extra hit points. Let's move into the um, actual trees. 
Now you'll notice that um, the cleric, I'm only spending in two different trees, Divine Disciple and Radiant Servant. Divine Disciple is very, very good because you get to pick up cool spell-like abilities like Searing Light, giving you a ton of additional damage. It is important to note that you kind of want to get this first. Um, you, The first thing you want to rush pretty much in every case is probably going to be rushing Holy Smite spell-like ability. This is one of the best things you can get in the entire game. But the only exception to that is I think you should go for Cure Moderate Wounds as soon as you can. So probably go into Radiant Servant, grab Divine Aid, grab Divine Cleansing, which is the five points, and then take Cure Moderate Wounds spell-like ability by the time you hit level three. The reason why you want to do this um, is because Cure Moderate Wounds spell-like ability, it costs four spell points. You can put, by level three, you'll have Maximize, Empower, and Quicken. So when you press this, it'll heal people for 80 to 100 at level three. You don't have 80 to 100 health at level three. So being able to just press a single button and heal anyone up to full every six seconds, uh, you can imagine why that's useful. So you want to grab this like right away. And then after that, pretty much fill out Divine Disciple. Like no joke, fill out Divine Disciple. Put all the rest of the points that I have in here. I don't make any changes. Just fill out Divine Disciple, get the Searing Light, get the Holy Smite spell-like ability. But you want this one first. The first few levels is Caster Cleric are a little bit slow. So try to group with people. There's going to be a million Corthos groups, a million Harbor groups, people that just want to like, yeah, please bring a healer. And just stand back and just keep casting Cure Moderate Wounds for the first couple of levels. And then once you get spell-like ability Searing Light, you just press this button. And by level six, you've got, again, Maximize, Empower, and quicken. You cast Searing Light, anything it hits dies. Anything. No matter what, it's dead. It's pretty good. Holy Smite, you'll be able to take around level 7 or 8. Once you have this, you press Holy Smite, and everything in the room literally dies. All the monsters all die every time. Um, and once you have this spell-like ability, uh, Cleric will feel a little silly at that point, because you'll go from, hey guys, I'm hanging behind, behind them, healing people, doing whatever, to you are the god of death, raining down um, holy uh, magic and destruction on people. It's pretty good. Um, after you have Holy Smite, I would then probably recommend going and picking up Positive Energy Burst, as well as Divine Healing. Uh, Divine Healing is you just use like one of your turns and it um, heals people for a bunch of healing over time. Uh, you could just put this on yourself and it lasts for a really long time and it's just nice to have. Uh, you can also put this on other people, depending on what you want to do. And then grab Positive Energy Burst as, like a, as a good heal, because this is an AoE heal and this you can apply your Maximize Empower, your Quicken, and your Empower Heal, which you also take on this build. Then finish up Divine Disciple, grab the Flame Strike spell-like ability, then finish up the Radiant Servant tree here and grab all of this extra healing stuff and what have you. It's pretty, pretty good. Um, if you want also, um, instead of altruism here, because uh, you have the points, you could take improved turning, which just gives you extra turns if you find you're running low. That is also an option here instead of altruism. I just went for this because it gives heal and positive spell power. So it's basically 13 spell power for three points, which isn't the best conversion, but it's you know, it's not too bad. Uh, you also want to grab the Intense Healing for the Positive Energy. Increase the maximum cash level of Positive Energy spells. This is fantastic because um, it works on stuff like Cure Moderate Wounds. So it's going to increase the power of your Cure Moderate Wounds spell-like ability by a ton. And this also affects the Heal spell, which has a maximum cash level of 15, making your heal even stronger, which is very, very good. Uh, human gives you access to some wisdom, uh, improve recovery for some healing amplification, and don't count me out, which gives you extended unconsciousness range. Uh, this is very good. So instead of dying at minus 10, you die at minus 30, which just gives you a little bit of leeway. And then War Priest is just, you know, you get some extra health. There's really nothing bad here. Just get some more hit points. So pretty straightforward tree, and that's kind of how you want to go through it. As far as the epic stuff goes, you want to be an exalted angel um, with some unyielding sentinel and draconic incarnation. Um, the unyielding sentinel is just to grab renewal. Um, renewal, I've talked about this in every single other build, is basically one of the best heals in the game, and this is 35 health and 35 health. So you get 70 health and one of the best heal spells. I mean, that's easy decision to, for me. Exalted Angel, you want to take this specifically because it buffs up all of your cleric stuff. Um, so you get um, this Sun Pillar ability, which is basically you press this and wherever you target it's going to die because of all of your metamagic feats that you apply to it. And if it doesn't die, it's stunned now, which is very, very cool from this effect up here. You have the Angelic Form, which makes it so all of your spells deal additional damage. All your healing spells do additional healing. And you just passively heal people that are around you. Uh, this ability is extremely good when you're playing on elite mode it basically means you and your allies can't die that are standing next to you because it heals you for so much when you're in the upper echelon the absolute top tier the highest difficulty in the video game this effect is not as useful because the healing gets reduced by a lot um but we're playing on hardcore league you don't ever go to that highest difficulty because it's literally too hard people stop at reaper 4 which is not even halfway to the highest difficulty so this ability is insanely good 
Um, you also pick up Shadows Upon You, which is every time you turn undead. So if you use your positive energy burst, it reduces the monster's saving throws by 10, or sorry, by five, which is very useful. And then you grab Holy Firebolt, which is one of the best damage spells in the game. You also grab Chronic Incarnation here because it gives you um, Elemental Blood. So whenever you cast a fire spell, um, you get temporary hit points, which is really, really nice. You get some extra bonuses to your saving throws. You get Reflex and Fortitude saves. So your character has High, Will, Reflex, and Fortitude. You don't need the extra point for You Don't Fail on a 1, um, but it basically means your saves will be really good. And then Scales of the Dragon is good to Blade of Armor that I've talked about in other builds. It's a buff that makes it so you take less damage when monsters hit you, or it, it absorbs armor or it damage effectively. It's like a damage shield, so it's very, very powerful. Now, moving on to cleric spells, um, this one's very easy to understand. Basically, take all the cure spells because you're given them for free, so you're always going to have them. Uh, grab damage spells you can pick up. In the other levels, your best damage spell is going to be Sound Burst that you get at level 3. So Nimbus of Light's okay, but it's kind of, kind of bad. You're mostly going to be like casting Bless and just hitting stuff with whatever you have in your hand. Sound Burst is your first damage spell, but again, a lot of the damage spells are going to be a little expensive because you don't have a lot of spell points, and you're going to want to wait for some spell-like abilities until you get to the higher levels. Searing Light is your first, like, pretty good damage spell. It only costs eight. You don't need to put any uh, metamagic feats on the spells that you're casting. Just cast Baseline Searing Light. Um, I don't know how I missed it in here. Oh, I know how I missed it in here um, due to a bug. So Sunbolt um, is a spell that you're granted automatically. Uh, for the or not granted um, it's a spell that you get um, from the the cleric tree it's very very good it's supposed to be down here in the third level um, so I just want to include it here uh, but Sunbolt you want to take in the third level spells it's an incredibly powerful damage spell for leveling but Holy Smite you want to be taking at level four um, again once you get to level four spells which is seven you can kind of just hit Holy Smite spell like ability and then Holy Smite and the room is empty and you're moving on to the next room Flame Strike same deal does a million damage very 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 good Comet Fall does pretty good damage. It's physical, so it's good for beating up golems. But you also get Sunbeam, which is even better for beating up golems, which is very, very good. Then later on, you're going to be picking up Word of Balance. Word of Balance is a better druid spell than it is a cleric spell. I don't love this one, but you can use it. It's good against, like, demons and stuff. If you play Reaper mode, it's good for Reapers, but instead of that, it's not that great. Um, Firestorm is one of the best fire spells in the game, only beaten out by Celestial Bombardment, the best fire spell in the game. Uh, once you get to level 17, you just take Celestial Bombardment and just press this whenever you can and you see a monster. And then all these pillars of fire come down and you're just like, ha 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 ha, and you just laugh as everything burns before you. Also take protection spells. So, you know, Magic Circle against evil. Pretty good. Prayer, the, one of the best buffs in the entire game because it gives you a bunch of saving throws. Death Ward, immune to negative energy and death effects. I mean, I like being immune to dying. That's pretty cool. Doesn't make you immune to dying, but being instantly killed. Um, what else is good? Heal. You got to take heal. It's the best heal in the whole game. You should probably take it. Um, Holy Aura. One of the other best buffs in the game for plus four to saves. Your character can get plus five to saves here and plus four to saves here. And then you get t four saves from your um, domain and an extra 10 when you turn undead. So your character is picking up like plus 23 to your saving throws. It's pretty good. So overall... Take these good spells. They're all pretty good. You're going to use them um, and have a blast with Caster Cleric. As far as items that you actually want to pick up on this character, uh, again, you're looking for uh, mostly wisdom items and constitution items. Things that give you healing spell power, light spell power, fire spell power are all going to be kind of good. You're probably going to want to wear a shield for the most part. Um, you don't have tower shield proficiency, but don't worry about having proficiency or not. If you find a good tower shield, just put it on. For whatever reason, shields don't require proficiency to get all the bonuses from them. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't write the rules. But you do want to have a shield on um, because shields make it so you take half damage from effects with a reflex save. So that's traps is a great example. So just taking half damage from traps when you walk through them is kind of good. On top of that, uh, you also want to be picking up um, like health items, physical resistance rating items, magic resistance rating items, getting things that give you armor. You want to be wearing heavy armor, shield, because you're a cleric, um, and kind of go out there and burn enemies with holy fire. And don't forget to cast Displacement basically on cooldown, so every time it comes off, well, not on cooldown, but when it comes off, just cast it again. It costs almost nothing, and you shouldn't have it as a cleric anyway, um, and it makes your character unbelievably defensive and tanky. Anyways, this has been your free-to-play hardcore build guides for Season 6. If these sound interesting, then feel free to pick one up. As I said, I'm going to be playing the Pale Master Trapper myself, um, so that should be a good time, and I will be streaming uh, for nearly 24 hours straight, going from level 1 to 20 in a single sitting on the first day of Hardcore League, so I hope I do well and I don't die. But uh, we did it last year, so we can do it, or last league, so we can do it this league as well. However, if these builds... Say you're somebody who out there, and you're like, hey, Strim, I got, like... 
uh, I'm a a bajillionaire, okay? I got the money. I don't want to play these builds for free-to-play players. I want the good stuff, you know, the ones that you got to pay a lot of money for. Well, stay tuned to next video where I have several builds for you, some of which are good, some of which are very interesting and might make you uh, very excited for this hardcore league. But with that being said, thank you for watching. Good luck, stay alive, and I hope to see you all out there at the level cap, or at least with seeing your goals. I want to see picture, pe- uh, people taking a picture of their cosmetics or their mounts or whatever we're going to be getting. Uh, I want to see all that stuff as soon as possible. So thank you for watching. Enjoy your day, and goodbye. Good luck. Hardcore league.